Hey tubers and welcome back to another install. This one I've done a sound and weathering job featuring a Marklin Trix 4A4 Union Pacific Big Boy. And I did a, uh, I used a QSI Revolution decoder and I put a, a 1.25 inch high bass speaker in the tender. And then up here um, in the smoke box, I put a small oval speaker in there and um, that way I get a uh, plenty of sound separation between the tenor and the front of the locomotive for a nice overall effect. It uh, gives the uh, sound uh, emanating from everywhere over the loco so um, when the loco is close to you it still appears or sounds to my ear that uh, you have a uh, chuff horn and bell uh, coming more towards the front of the locomotive as opposed to just strictly out of the, uh, the tender. So it was a pretty uh, straightforward uh, installation. Um, I did have a uh, Loc Sound uh, 3.5 decoder in there before. Um, and I, while they're a good overall decoder, um, I've standardized on using the uh, QSI or the uh, Soundtrack um, So again, a, a relatively uh, straightforward install on this locomotive. Uh, there is a set screw that's located on top of the uh, uh, tender uh, where one single, screw's, one single screw holds the uh, tender on and you just simply remove the, uh, the shell of the tender and it's a relatively um, easy plug-in uh, using a uh, universal type of uh, decoder and then you can add your speakers. Also, uh, the shell of this locomotive comes off with two, uh, with two screws and the one, uh, one screw is uh, located underneath uh, this front forward steam dome uh, here and then there's another one uh, located uh, just forward of the cab. You remove those two screws and the whole um, uh, die cast um, boiler lifts right up and I uh, this is my first time really inside one of these Trix Marklin uh, uh, locomotives and they're just beautifully engineered um, it's, it's really it's really uh, unbelievable the the engineering that's gone into this locomotive is uh, by far and away um, top in the field and uh, the low speed of these locomotives is I got I got to say it's it's the best I've seen. I I just haven't encountered anything else uh, quite like it and that includes us uh, uh, also diesel locomotives. Um, once I'm done with the intro on the uh, weathering and sound portion of it, we'll uh, put it up on the track and uh, you guys will be able to see for yourself just really how smooth and and slow this thing can Moving away from the uh, decoder install, which is relatively straightforward. Um, I did my uh, weathering on this and I used a, uh, the first thing that I did was uh, use a, a dull coat uh, to overspray the entire engine and you can see how I did that um, on one of my previous videos featuring the uh, Bachmann EM1 and then rather than using any paint on this locomotive I just simply used the uh, Bragdon Enterprise um, powders and um, I just blended everything together. I use about uh, seven different colors ranging from a really dark uh, coal-like type of uh, powder all the way to like a lime white in order to get uh, various shades. So I'll just uh, kind of spin the locomotive around and you guys will be able to see for yourself just kind of the variations um, in the uh, in the color that those powders uh, can create for an effect and I think they really do a nice job um, it takes me, this one, I spent probably close to an hour and a half with the, uh, with the powders on it. And um, the lighting on this side is not so good. So let's spin it around and, and you'll be able to see that kind of streaking effect that I can get on the tender. Uh, the Union Pacific, uh, especially like in the uh, Wyoming uh, area where these locomotives uh, operated were known for uh, pretty scaly water. Um, so uh, I referenced um, for the weathering job on this, uh, this past spring Classic Trains uh, came out with a Big Boy and Challenger special issue and so I was just like, ah, 
Okay, I'll uh, take a look see in there and, and see what they've got. And there's about maybe a 15 page spread. And uh, the uh, photographs are just fantastic, um, especially as a reference point for, again, either the um, weathering effects on these uh, large Union Pacific uh, big boys and challengers. And um, they say, I think it really came out quite nice. Um, better than the uh, the yeah, factory also, showing. That dull coat provides an adhesive um, surface for the uh, Bragdon Enterprise uh, uh, powders that I um, just simply apply on and uh, mix around. And uh, I get this thing know, on the track and uh, give you guys a uh, show on how this thing operates. And again, um, it's a, it's a it's a work of wonder. Those Germans know what they're doing. I couldn't help myself. I brought it over to my uh, area where I do airbrushing and uh, just to kind of reinforce some of the effects of the overall weathering. So I added a little bit of black, gray, and uh, some more white scaling uh, just forward of the cab. And then went back and retouched everything up with uh, more powders and also added uh, a little bit more uh, brown uh, rust colors, uh, especially where uh, condensate and water might uh, gather around the boiler. So um, we'll zoom in here, kind of give you the uh, final effect of the weathering on this. And then how that looks there on the tender and doing some streaking down uh, from where water might uh, splash out from where it gets refilled. And then if you also uh, carefully notice, um, I tend to uh, go with a pretty significantly light um, color underneath around the wheels to uh, bring all the details out of the shadow, uh, kind of makes everything pop. And then uh, I'll zoom back over to the other end and uh, kind of give a close-up on a PCM big boy that I have yet to weather and uh, so this one right here that's factory and you can certainly tell the difference uh, just as far as uh, the detailing and weathering I think that uh, really makes it pop here on this one And then uh, over here to the left, just going to kind of give you a shot of a uh, Proto Y3. And again, uh, another uh, fairly heavy weathering job on this. And again, uh, I really try to focus in on adding uh, lighter colors to make sure all the details come out. Um, darker on top, lighter underneath, and then uh, kind of blending everything in. So, variation is the key. And uh, again, um, the one thing I really do like about those powders is, is uh, there's really nothing to mess up. You add them, you spread them around, add a little bit more. If you don't like it, add another color there you go uh, so uh, we'll pop out and uh, we'll come back and uh, fire this baby oh, up. nearly max momentum and then the uh, speed curve is so that it starts really slow it doesn't gather uh, going up uh, in speed until much later on the um, higher throttle so uh, here we go guys a little uh, little back and forth for you
there she is guys uh, in my uh, estimation perhaps uh, the finest HO scale uh, locomotive made just uh, ultra smooth fantastic detail um, and uh, I don't think you can really design a better locomotive a little bit pricey but uh, wow what you see is what you get anyways guys hope you enjoyed and uh, hope to feature uh, another uh, weathering uh, segment coming up for a uh, ultra modern SD70 Ace uh, CSX in the uh, future scheme here should uh, have that posted uh, next hopefully uh, by the end of this weekend anyways guys be well and uh, take care